There are more than 7,500 trucking companies in Nebraska alone. That's a lot of eyes that can be looking for signs of human trafficking. And I talked with an Omaha company about why it requires drivers to be trained on what to watch for. I do it because I love to travel. Tania Padilla loves the open road. She's a professional driver with Omaha's Hill Brothers Transportation. So this one is actually a sleeper berth, and then I have a reefer connected to it, so it's a refrigerated trailer. Padilla is one of the more than 200 drivers for Hill Brothers. Hill Brothers is an over-the-road carrier based in here in Omaha that operates in all 48 states, but primarily here in the Midwest, um, hauling refrigerated and dry goods. Raul Soria is the company's safety director, and he says all drivers go through training when they're hired and even after they're on the job so they know how to spot potential human trafficking. Any unusual activity at uh, truck stops or anywhere big trucks are, are around, suspicious vehicles, suspicious persons. So I think it's very eye-opening for them uh, and they never thought, hey, um, I can make a difference in someone's life by uh, just picking up the phone and making the call. That number is on these cards carried by the drivers. It has the National Human Trafficking Hotline. The trucks also have these stickers so people know that driver is there to help. Because it's important to us, it's a passion of ours. Uh, this is the one thing that we can do to give back to the community. And we all have uh, family and relatives out there. And if this could save a life, we're happy to do it. Like when I go into the truck stops, I see um, like, it, it sounds odd, but like the vibe, because you can kind of tell if someone is happy with that person or if someone is scared with that person or nervous. Now Padilla says, thankfully, she hasn't had to report any suspicious behavior. But if she did see something, she wouldn't hesitate. She would say something. I think that you should just do this because it's the right thing to do and just be a good person. Now the training Hill Brothers drivers and a million others go through is provided by a group called Truckers Against Trafficking. The Nebraska Trafficking Association is a strong supporter of the Colorado-based group. And Truckers Against Trafficking's mission is to fight what they call a crime hidden in plain sight. So we say professional drivers are the eyes and ears of our nation's highways, and they're often in places that victims will be brought in to be sold. So if they can recognize and report this crime as they see it happening, it's going to lead to victim recovery and hopefully the arrest of the perpetrator. How does it work? What do you do? So primarily we train the industry, right? So we go to the industry. I mean, there's millions and millions of CDO holders out there. And uh, we ask them to adopt our training, whether it's at the CDL school level or the carriers themselves. We go to truck stops. Um, again, any tier of the industry, we're saying, can you adopt TAT training into your training and orientation? And then equip every single one of your drivers with our wallet card, which gives the signs to look for, the questions to ask, the hotline number to call. So they always have that information handy. We also include questions to ask if the professional driver or say a truck stop employee were to interact with a potential victim of human trafficking. So things like, are you free to leave? Can you come and go as you please? Are you free to keep your own money? When's the last time you've seen your family, right? Questions that hopefully get the potential victims talking to them and help them ascertain if this individual actually needs help. And certainly those red flag indicators. You've got a minor selling commercial sex. It does not matter. That child needs help, no matter what they're saying or if they have a smile on their face. You have any sign of pimp control, right? The car pulls up, three or four girls all get out, start working the row, right? Going from truck to truck, knocking on doors. Or, um, you know, signs of branding. Uh, pimps will sometimes brand their victims and marking them, right, as their property. Or talking about uh, anything they hear on the, the CB radio around talking about needing to make a quota uh, or, again, commercial company um, or having a daddy or that controlling boyfriend, who again, who's, who's putting them out there. Um, these kinds of red flag indicators, you know, maybe you see one, but uh, oftentimes you're going to see a few, uh, you know, one to two to three. Those things should be setting off, right, those red flags, and hopefully that driver will take action and make a phone call. And about taking action, is there a concern of possible vigilantism or truckers getting into a position that may they may not be ready to handle? Well, we ask the driver to make the phone call from the anonymity and confidentiality of his or her cab. So we're not asking drivers to take victims and drive off with them. We're certainly not asking drivers 
to confront a pimp or a trafficker on the premises, we are again asking them to, if they can, have a conversation or observe these red flags and then notify the authorities. If you're seeing a crime in progress, call 911. Otherwise, call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-3737-888. So absolutely, Rob, we, we don't want to put the trucker in a bad or unsafe situation. And at the same time, recognizing this is a criminal element um, and it does take courage to actually say, I'm going to do my part on behalf of that victim because that individual needs me to step up. Have you been successful? Absolutely, that's the great news. This program is actually working. Drivers have now made over 2,600 calls into the National Human Trafficking Hotline, resulting in over 700 cases of human trafficking involving 1,300 victims. And that's just one slice of the data pie because no one is tra uh, tracking calls to 911 or the local sheriff's office on a nationwide basis. And you can just see, though, from, from those hotline numbers, this program is actually working. What still needs to be done then? Well, we still have a long way to go. We've reached a million, over a million CDL holders, and that's fantastic. <laughs> but there are 3.5 million CDL holders. So we need to continue to reach the trucking industry and, and saturate them with our training materials. We've also replicated our model into the bus industry. And so now we're seeking to train every commercial bus driver as well as every school bus driver because half of America's school children ride the school bus every day. And then we've also taken this program and expanded it into the energy industry as well, because we want those guys out on the oil rigs as well to be looking for this crime because they can really make a difference again if they're educated and equipped to do something about it. Well, some truck stops are doing something about it, like Sap Brothers. They have emergency buttons in their restrooms, so if someone's being trafficked, they hit that button and can get immediate help. All right, still ahead, local agencies on the human trafficking issue and how you can help them put criminals in jail. First, a reminder, your comments important part of the show. If you want